Listen, O coastlands, to me, and listen, lend your ear peoples from afar. Adonai has called me from the womb, he has made mention of my name from my mother's bowels, and he had made my mouth like a sharp sword. In the shadow of his hand he has hidden me and made me a polished shaft. He has hidden me in his quiver and said to me, You are my servant, O Israel, in whom I will be glorified. For Zion's sake I will not be silent, and for Jerusalem's sake I will not rest, until its righteousness goes out as a brightness, and her salvation as a burning lamp. And the nations will see your righteousness, and all kings your glory, and you will be called by a new name, which the mouth of Adonai will name. You also will be crown of glory in the hand of Adonai, and the royal diadem in the hand of your God. Shalom, my name is Irene. Let the voice of the Spirit of Truth speak today for our souls. I pray for all who listen to me today. This is the place where God wants to reach your heart. Repent, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Prophetic update number two, visions about the future war. Today, Heavenly Father put it on my heart to share with you some of my visions and dreams about the nations and the future war. Back in 2010, I had a dream. In this dream, I was home with my family. It was night because we were sleeping. Then in the dream, I saw a big storm coming toward us. Out of the window, I saw that huge tall trees were bending under the power of the wind and many of them started to break down. I was concerned for my family and their safety because I was afraid that one of the trees would crash through the roof of our house. But nothing happened to my family in the dream. Dear friends, I did not think a lot about this dream and was puzzled about what this dream meant. But the Holy Spirit kept reminding me about it and I kept it in my heart. This dream was just one piece of the puzzle of the future event that are going to happen in the future. In fact, have already happened for the last six years. Many times in the Bible God referred to many rulers and countries as trees, big and tall trees. For example, in Daniel chapter 4 we can read about the king of Babylon. In Ezekiel chapter 17 and Ezekiel chapter 31 the prophet was referring to the nations as the trees. The dream was a warning about the coming judgment for the rulers and kings of the nations. The tall and mighty trees are going down. God is going to send a worldwide storm, a storm of social unrest, revolutions, and wars that will topple down many governments and countries. It started few months after my dream in 2010. Then there was a chain of events that brought down many governments in North Africa and Middle East. The reason why I know that this dream was about future event, because this dream had two parts. The first part I released by the Holy Spirit to share here online and the second part has mostly personal meaning and it was about future of United States. I am not in the freedom right now to share about this future but because of the second part that has a personal 
meaning to me I can tell you that this was about it's it's about future event that will bring America of United States to the judgment before God and the future of United States will be changed but not before certain things going to happen around the world this is a citation from Wikipedia then in 2010 started so-called Arab Spring the Arab Spring was revolutionary wave of demonstrations and protests, both non-violent and violent, riots and civil wars in the Arab world that began on 18 December 2010 in Tunisia with the Tunisian Revolution and spread throughout the countries of the Arab League and its surroundings. While the wave of initial revolutions and protests faded by the mid-2012, some started to refer to the succeeding and still ongoing large-scale dis discourse conflict in the Middle East and North Africa as Arab winter. The most radical discourse from Arab Spring into the still ongoing civil wars took place in Syria as early as the second half of 2011. By the end of February 2012, rulers had been forced from power in Tunisia, Egypt, Libya and Yemen. Civil uprising had erupted in Bahrain and Syria. Major protests had broken out in Algeria, Iraq, Jordan, Kuwait, Morocco, and Sudan. And minor protests had occurred in Mauritania, Oman, Saudi Arabia, Djibouti, Western Sahara, and Palestine. Weapons and tour gear fighters returning from the Libyan civil wars stalked a simmering conflict in Mali which has been described as fallout from Arab Spring in North Africa. The fallout of these events, Syria still experienced ongoing war that already lasted for almost five years. Citation from Wikipedia The Syrian civil war is ongoing multi-sided armed conflict with international interventions taking place in Syria. The unrest began in the early spring of 2011 within the context of the Arab Spring protest with nationwide protest against President Bashar al-Assad's government, whose forces responded with violent crackdowns. The conflict gradually morphed from mass protest to armed rebellion after months of military sieges. United Nations report released in December 2012 stated that the conflict had become overly sectarian in nature between Alawite dominated government forces, militias and other Shia groups, fighting primarily against Sunni dominated rebel groups. However, both opposition and government forces deny that. Initially, the Syrian government relied mainly on its armed forces, but since 2014 local protection units made up of volunteers known as National Defense Force have come to play a large role gradually becoming the primary military force of the Syrian state. From the early stages, the Syrian government received technical, financial, military and political support from Russia, Iran and Iraq. In 2013, Iran-backed Hezbollah entered the war in support of Syrian army. Due to foreign involvement, the conflict had been called a proxy war between the regional Sunni and Shia powers most prominently as a proxy conflict between Saudi Arabia and Iran. In September 2015, Russia, Iraq, Iran and Syria set up a joint operation room information center in Baghdad to coordinate their activity in Syria. On 30 September 2015, Russia started its own air campaign on the site and at the request of the government of Syria. The resultant proxy war between the United States and Russia led some commentators to characterize the situation as a proto-world war with nearly a dozen countries embroiled in, the, in two overlapping conflicts. In July 2013, the Syrian government was said to be in control of approximately 30 to 40 percent of countries territory and 60 of the Syrian population. In August 2015, the territory fully controlled by Syrian army was reported to have shrunk roughly to 16% of the country, 
but still has the majority of the population due to internal migration. International organizations have accused the Syrian government, ISIL and other opposition forces of severe human rights violations with multiple massacres occurring. The conflict caused a considerable displacement of population. On 1st February 2016, a format starts of the UN-mediated Geneva Syria peace talk was announced by UN, with the fighting continuing unabated. And now, as of February 19, 2016, we see a progress of this war, Saudi Arabia and Turkey preparing for massive ground invasion of Syria. This is the station from the Prophecy News Watch. 350,000 soldiers, 20,000 tanks, 2,450 warplanes, and 460 military helicopters are massing in the northern Saudi Arabia for a military exercise that is being called Northern Thunder. According to the official announcement, forces are being contributed by Saudi Arabia, the United Arab Emirates, Egypt, Jordan, Bahrain, Sudan, Kuwait, Morocco, Pakistan, Tunisia, Omar, Qatar, Malaysia, and several other nations. This exercise will reportedly last for 18 days, and during that time the airspace over northern Saudi Arabia will be closed to air traffic. This will be the largest military exercise in the history of the region, and it comes amid rumors that Saudi Arabia and Turkey are preparing for a massive ground invasion of Syria. Now, on QatarDay.com news as of 18 February, we see there was um, an article, Fighting has begun, Turkish shelling into Syria directly attacking Syrian Arab army and perimeter of Russian base in Latakia. And um, this article describing of Turkey start doing a military move on Syrian territory. Syrian forces commander Abu Omar told Russian news outlet Sputnik via electronic interview, Turkey is attacking us with mortars and rockets across the border. If the attacks continue, we will respond. We see the situation in Syria becomes more and more intense. Right before our eyes, we see fulfillment of old prophecy about Damascus and Syria. In the Bible, the prophet Isaiah said about Damascus, The burden against Damascus, behold, Damascus is taken away from being a city, and it shall be a heap of ruins. Damascus, for a long time, was one of the oldest continuing existing cities in the world. Its history could count thousands of years back. From Wikipedia we can read about Damascus. Damascus was a part of the ancient province of Amuru in the Hiscus kingdom from 1720 to 1570 BC. Some of the earliest Egyptian records are from the 1350 BC Amarna letters when Damascus called Damascus was ruled by King Biryawaza. Damascus is mentioned in Genesis 14.15 as existing at the time of the War of the Kings. According to the 1st century Jewish historian Flavius Josephus, in his 21 volume Antiquities of the Jew, Damascus, along with Tahonitis, was found by Uz, the son of Aram. In Antiquities, Josephus reports, Nicolaus of Damascus, in the fourth book of his history, says thus, Abraham reigned at Damascus, being a foreigner, who came with an army out of the land above Babylon, called the land of the Chaldeans. But after a long time he got him up and removed from the country also with his people and went into the land then called the land of Canaan, but now the land of Judea. And this when he posterity were become a multitude as to which posterity of his we relate their history in another work. Now the name of Abraham is even still famous in the country of Damascus, and there is shown a village named from him, the habitation of Abraham. But now, with the war, the old prophecy may finally come to fulfillment. We see what kind of impact the civil war had on the neighboring countries, and on the whole world, politically, economically, and demographically, and this is not yet the end. 
with the tariff of ISIS and with the proxy war between major countries, we are coming to a time when everyone on the earth is going to be shaken. Many countries are the result of the shaking will be brought down economically, politically, and demographically. We already see now the Syrian refugee crisis is bringing a major moral and cultural and also economical crisis in Europe. I had a vision about war in the Middle East, which I would like to share with you. In one of my visions, I saw a map of the Middle East. A missile was sent toward the Israel by one of its neighboring countries, and then a fire started in Israel. But soon the fire spread to the neighboring countries and then all over the world. So in this vision, the fire started in Israel. Israel was attacked. And then, uh, as in my vision, I have seen this fire burning. It spread, it affected other countries. And all over the world, this started to burning in that fire. In another vision, I saw the war room of Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ, in heaven. He was surrounded by his generals around the table. And on the table, I saw a map. And this map was the country of Russia. Then Yeshua took his sword and struck the southern part of Russia with it. I then saw cracks on the map that started to spread from the sword toward Israel, the Middle Eastern countries toward Europe and even towards America. I understood that something will happen when Russia will be hit and the consequences of this heat will spread all over the earth. The visions were like little pieces of a puzzle. But now as we are approaching to a very grievous situation, when Russia got involved in a proxy war in Syria, other countries are entering into this war, including Saudi Arabia. Israel is in the middle of this war too. I believe this war will spill over on Israel. In my previous video about the blood moons and the vision of the war of Israel with Goliath nation, I explained that Israel will be struck very hard by these opposing nations and that many people will die. Israel will defend itself against these nations. This retaliation will affect many neighboring countries. There will be more refugees and more dead people, including civilians. You can watch my video on you, my YouTube channel, Irina Petra and Yeshua, for more details of what I have been seeing. I believe that Satan is trying to take control over two big, spiritually strategic places and take it away from Israel. One of these places is Mount Hermon. This mountain is unique in such a way because on this mountain came down the watchers that corrupted the earth before the flood. This is the spiritual high place that will have great importance for the fallen ones in the last days. This place is the spiritual portal for darkness, not only against Israel, but also against the entire human race. This spiritual war is increasing specifically in this area and spilling over on its neighboring countries manifested by local wars. In another way, I would like just to share that everything that happening on the earth, the wars, the rumors of wars, unsettling social unrest, it's a manifestation of something more happening in the spiritual realm. Because we know from the scripture that Satan has its own dominion over different region and these different fallen angels have their dominions over different regions of the world. But yet Heavenly Father also tried to establish his own strongholds over different parts of the world for the sake of saving people. And there is a constantly going on local wars. When these battles increasing in their intensity, then that manifesting in the physical realm of the local wars unsettling, especially when the darkness try to put more pressure, the darkness try to fight for the control. Yes, Satan is the prince of this world, but he does not have complete control yet. He has limited control because Heavenly Father working and uh, bringing his will on the earth through people who listening, listen, working his way, keeping his commandments. Through them he can establish his kingdom. Through them he can 
reinforce his will on this earth. And this is why it is important for people to follow God's commandments, keep them, and admit that Heavenly Father is the Creator and admit His authority, accept His authority over our lives. On another hand, Satan tried to overtake these dominions over the hearts of the people, over the hearts of the people. And there is a constant battle. And we see when the decline of morality happening in certain places, the darkness is taking over, and there there is also battle happening there. Spiritual battle, but there is spilling over in the in the way of the physical realm. I believe right now God is harvesting, big harvest among the Muslim people. It is invisible, we cannot hear about this on the news, but I believe with all my heart, this is the reason why Satan increasing his pressure and building his pressure and spilling this war because he continuously warned with God's angels for the hearts of the people. And because Satan, he hates human race. He brings death, he brings poverty, he brings destruction. And one of the, his manifest tools, one of his army that manifests his evil and darkness, we see in this ISIS that doing such wickedness among people, terrorizing people all over the world. So this Mount of Hermon is the mountain cluster constituting the southern end of anti-Lebanon mountain range. Its summit straddles the border between Syria and Lebanon, above sea level in the highest point in Syria. On the top of it, the United Nations buffer zone between Syria and Israeli occupied territory is the highest permanently manned UN position in the world, known as Hermon Muhatel. The southern slopes of Mount Hermon extend to the Israeli occupied portion of the Holland Heights, where the Mount Hermon ski resort is located. A peak in this area rising to 7,336 feet is the highest elevation in, in Israeli controlled territory. In the Book of Enoch, Mount Hermon is the place where the watchers class of fallen angels descended to earth. They swear upon the mountain that they would take wives among the daughters of men and take mutual imprecation of their sin. Enoch chapter 6. The mountain or summit is referred to as Saphon in Ugaritic texts where the place of Baal is located in a myth about Atar. So we see the importance of this mount in the last days because Yeshua himself told that in the last days will be like in the, in the day of Noah. And as we know, the days of Noah were filled with corruptions of all flesh. And the reason the corruption came in the first place is because of the fallen watchers that came on this mountain and had an oath. And I believe that the same thing is going to happen in the last days when the fallen angels will start manifesting themselves in the world. And I believe this is a spiritual portal. This mount is the spiritual portal because the Antichrist, the beast, will come out from the bottomless pit. He will come out from the abyss. And because of this mount, we see there is a l lots of activities going on. And Satan tried to take complete control over this mountain. Because right now Israel is partially in the control and also Syria with Lebanon. And as we see, there is a UN position out there as a buffer zone. This is very unique situation that nowhere in the world such mountain has such importance. And if we're going to look what is going on? There is the sum when ISIS came toward the, this mountain, they tried to shell and they tried to take this over. But of course, Israel has a stronghold over this mountain. And I know th this is where there will be a greatest point of the war in the spiritual warfare because God limited right now presence of fallen angels in this mountain until their time will come. The same way is another very important place, 
spiritual place I would call that is a important in the spiritual realm it's a portal between a uh, world and the spiritual realm it's a place Jerusalem in the end of this the Bible says Jerusalem will be trampled down by na Gentiles nations in Revelation chapter 11 verse 2 we can read but leave out the court which is outside of the temple and do not measure it for it was given to the nations and they will trample the holy city 42 months it is more likely that jerusalem will be taken by the united nations as the city of the world this is also a very strategic place in the spiritual realm there is very intense spiritual warfare between the two powers that have control over this place the spiritual war is manifested in the physical realm by hate civil unrest terror and war and as we know that there is a big conflict between muslim and jewish in, in, especially in the mount temple mount and there is lots of uh, unrest and civil disobedience and terrorist attacks especially in this place lots of hate this is manifestations through the people who have opened doors by the darkness that manifest and try to have control over this place but nevertheless one time heavenly father showed me a vision that over israel and especially over jerusalem there is a huge heavenly portal that is open to heaven and the angels of God, very strong and mighty, even from among the other angels, are constantly fighting the forces of darkness to keep that portal open. Because even Michael the Archangel himself is personally overseeing this place and constantly keeping watch over this place and over Israel specifically. There is whole much of spiritual warfare going on over the mind of the people of Israel and especially government in Israel and this is why it is important to pray for the peace of Jerusalem so the Prince of Peace Yeshua HaMashiach Jesus Christ would come and establish his kingdom on the earth that is in heaven but this will not happen until the Jewish people will say Baruch Abba B'Shem Adonai Blessed be the one who comes in the name of the Lord. As we enter into the dark times, I would like to give you a message of hope and the message of warning. Heavenly Father is in control. Nothing is happening without Him allowing it to happen. You may ask why He allowed human suffering in this world. It is because of the sins of the nations. Many nations all over the world are rejecting his authority more and more. They are denying him in their schools, in their laws, and in their lives. Many nations are accepting the evil one and his ways, his world, and his religion. Many people choose to live life of sexual immorality, materialistic obsession, murdering innocent babies through abortion, persecution, and injustice. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked, for whatever of man sows, that he also will reap. Galatians 6, 7 God is taking his hand of protection from these nations who are mocking him and who reject him as their God. He is giving them up to the evil one, who is the murderer from the beginning and thrives on human death and suffering. And now I would like to share with you the word that Heavenly Father gave to me. Woe to you, wicked nations, for the time has come. The time of the Gentiles is coming to an end. My harvest is at hand. I am coming with my judgment against all nations of the world, and I will judge each of you according to your wickedness, Jewish and Gentiles alike. But for my people who keep my word and follow my way, be strong and do not be afraid. I am with you. You will suffer a little in this world that is standing against you, but be in peace. My reward is with you. I am first and the last, the Aleph and Taf. I am who I am, and no one can take you away from my hand. You are a witness to the evil of the world, so that my judgment would be righteous during the judgment day. You are called to preach the good news of salvation till I call you home. I am coming soon, 
and my judgment is with me. Heavenly Father, bless you all. Vai se lecha, shalom.